Welcome back to Buckle Up Emergency Press Conference. Michael? Got serious shit to talk about today. I think so. It really does feel serious. And uh, we were going to release one episode this week. We're pushing that episode because we have some stuff to talk about. What are we talking about? What You, you brought it up. You wanted to talk about Yay. Yay. I did want to talk about Yay. I wanted to talk about yay. I want to talk about anti-Semitism. I, and generally, like, the whole pile on to what's, like, a trending thing to offer an opinion, I, I don't always, most often, don't feel that impulse. Except if we, you and I are just, like, talking. Even if we're recording one, like, we'll talk amongst each other. I don't mm-hmm. feel like we have to comment on this. That, that rarely happens for me. Because it feels always a little bit, like, it, it rings pompous or arrogant to say, like, I have to offer my two cents here you know there's that little bit of that inner voice inside you know but yeah i don't have much of that at all you don't ever have that inclination to hold back on commenting on something oh no no, i do i do i mean i don't yeah i don't know oh see yeah i'm I'm curious i'm I'm curious to hear what you have to say to add to the conversation about it because you because you're excited to talk about it yeah well i think given my i can't believe i'm going to use this word intersection Of being a Jew, a musician, content creator, and someone who has has had experience with mental illness, and the conservative libertarian leaning side, it all kind of puts me in a unique position, I think, to comment on this from, I don't want to say a non-biased place, but at least a certain perspective that I think could be clarifying, you know? Yeah, Yeah. plus you're an anti-Semite. Right. But, Michael, serious podcast. I, I just think that there's a lot of things about this whole situation that bother me, not just on the typical, like, you know, people hating on Kanye for his awful remarks, but so much of it at so, on so many levels that have really, I think, are so wrong fundamentally and misunderstood. The way people are responding is wrong. Everything about it. I, I okay. think almost everything at every level is pretty much wrong, except Lex Fridman. He did it right. <laughs> yeah, I've had my yeah my first instinct about all this was how sort of depraved the media was and how much they were lopping up this drama, you mm-hmm. know, for the clicks and the the site visits and all that, which is why I, I felt like it wasn't even worth paying attention to yeah. to begin with, let alone commenting on. Um, mm-hmm. But then you pointed me to, and I didn't really, really be, re- see how big of a deal it was. It was becoming. You pointed me to the interview he did with Lex Fridman, mm-hmm. um, which I want to see how many views that has now. Do you know how many it has? When I was checking it out, it was at like seventy five k, which is baby stages. Oh, it was one point four million. It's at two and a half million yeah, now. It was one point four million yesterday. Um, and again, yeah, so a lot of people are watching it, um, and I thought it was it, that interview in, in in and of itself. I think is is worth talking about for sure. And let's get to that. But I do yeah. think what's really important here is like the order in which we structure this conversation sort of matters because I posted a video on my Instagram and all my social media responding to Candace Owens in that narrow setting because she commented in such a way that was immediately sort of trying to contextualize and defend Kanye West. And we could talk all about why I think that was very revealing of a certain confirmation bias on her part that she's really obvious about and unable to escape, you know? But that's still a very narrow sliver of the of the issue, <coughs> you know? Oh, you do have COVID right now, right? You're okay. I do, yes. <laughs> okay. That's why we're on Riverside. Hey, remember two episodes ago, you were like, I thought I had COVID. I'm like, and we'll yeah, coach no, over I didn't have it. I, but and I really have it. It's not one of those uh, bullshit COVID ones I really have. You're sick. You're ill. I'm ill. Okay, I'm but Ill. about yay. Screw your health. <laughs> you talk. We can do a whole episode on health. We've all, we've had some crazy things happen <laughs> between the two of us. Yeah, <laughs> we got to talk about that. That's another no, one. Back to, but anyway, back I don't want to lose sight of the conversation. I think the Candace Owen things is like one thing. And if I were to just talk about that, there'd be... I think people would read into it that I'm taking a certain position. And I can tell already, it's funny, like, of all the hate I get online, some, so much of it comes from, like, right-wing, triggered, Trumpy supporters, which is very ironic, 
right? It's just so funny. Those are the only comments we get. Yeah, and it's just funny because that's not where that, I'd like to. For me, to, I would never expect me to get that kind of pushback. Uh, given you know my politics, flakes. you know my politics and all that stuff. It's yeah, just and, uh, and these people are such snowflakes. Like they they hear one anti-Trump thing and they yeah, yeah. they really lose their shit. They can't yeah, handle yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But back to this issue at hand, the whole yay controversy in general. Yeah. The order at which we structure this conversation sort of matters, so people kind of know. Where uh, I guess I'm, I'm coming from and my perspective on it. Um, so let's start. Yeah, I, I want to start on the outset by saying that. Well, I, th- I yeah. Well, so let's talk about the structure. How do you want to okay. structure it? Well, I just think first there's there's my thoughts on Kanye West in relation to mental illness because I yeah, think that's all where I want to start too. I think that's where all of this. As far as uh, him as the source, that's where it's all rooted, and I really believe that. And what is what is on display and has been on display for years with him are these episodes of mania that you're witnessing. And what's so sick and abhorrent to me is that the media and a lot of people that are influenced by the media are all attributing some sort of deeper wisdom or credibility to somebody's display of illness, you know, and, and an expression of that. And they're fetishizing it. They're fetishizing Kanye West's uh, mental illness episodes (coughs) for, like you said, for clicks, for entertainment, and also trying to ascribe this sort of deeper wisdom that he's seeing when what's happening is word vomit, stream of consciousness, incoherence, his brain is literally on fire. He's going through a manic episode repeatedly, one after the other. And, and it's pretty obvious, if you have any familiarity with it, that that's what's happening. We all have all these – everyone in the world, Kanye West included, has the worst thoughts imaginable. We all have horrible thoughts. You know, everyone talks about in the conversation today, in the mon- modern conversation today about – actions, beliefs, which beliefs are right, which beliefs are wrong, which values are right, which values are wrong. You have the woke left crying racism everywhere where it doesn't exist and uh, accusing people of racism, even if they haven't acted that way, but even just by nature of what race they are, they're racist against one group or another. So you have that intersectionality conversation. You have all these things. But one thing that we all have in common as human beings is bad thoughts. Like thoughts just kind of appear. Right? They come to you. You could think the worst thing and like you never express it or even vocalize it most of the time. But someone who's going through a manic episode, as Kanye West clearly demonstrably is, it all comes out. So that means I guess the comforting thing in that is that oh, I maybe comforting is the wrong word. But like anything he's saying, I don't think has to be taken literally or seriously, other than as if Imagine he did a bunch of cocaine or acid and started talking a bunch of crap. Nobody would be like, yo, did you hear Kanye's commentary on such and such? You'd be like, yeah, but he's tripping on acid. Like his brain is on fire. Like you, you, you watch the Lex Fridman interview and Lex is like almost like a therapist just sitting yeah. and listening him out. And that's really yeah. nice and patient of, of Lex Fridman and trying to sort of, uh, you know, validate what he's saying in certain ways and listen. But like drawing pictures randomly and ascribing – this and this and the problem is that because Kanye not only is mentally ill but also super famous and super artistically talented people are equating one genius right and the source of certain genius artistically to whatever's going on here so it right. must be that he's insightful in every way and i just don't think that's true it could so, be the same sources of energy that are feeding artistic genius and mental illness but one is mental illness yes yeah, so, and one so, is artistic genius so and that's why i didn't Pay yeah. attention to anything to anything that he was saying, because because that was clear. Yeah, and he, he also I don't think he's very bright. Like he's he's obviously he's a genius. I lo- mm-hmm. and I love his music. He's an artistic genius. He doesn't he doesn't seem to have a real grasp on on the sophistication of the thoughts he's trying to articulate. Um, it's but it's but, not. But that's but, wrong too. It's not a lack of grasp. He you understand? It's like. He cannot no, no, control I'm, I'm, what's coming no, out of his mouth. I'm just saying, like, in terms of the genius thing, like, oh, if he's saying it, he's like, he doesn't even sound that smart. But th- th- that's the reason I, I ignored it all, because obviously he's just having an episode. But the No, reason... but it's not, yeah, but he's not a random homeless guy on the street who's just, like, spouting well, off. Right, he is one of the most influential... There are a lot of kids who don't understand that. 
and, he's, and, and, and there's a lot of people who are piggybacking on it to bring up a conversation that exists outside of him, regardless it, of whether he's having an episode or not. Exactly. And the problem is that we could write this off as somebody just having a manic episode and, you know, hopefully he gets well. But he happens to also be one of the most influential cultural icons and figures today. So everything he says gets amplified and megaphoned and given us and lent a sort of credibility to be taken seriously or without properly contextualizing it as, okay, this guy is incoherent and saying like, I actually found more clips as I did more like digging and stuff because one of the podcasts he was on where he really mouthed off some of the worst anti-Semitic stuff and tropes. He also was saying like, I'm jealous of the Jewish people. They, and he was like praising Jews too. So there's like, you know, there's, there's, it's fundamental incoherence going on. And, you know, so I, I don't want to take it fully as, you know, I'm not accusing him of being an anti-Semite in the traditional sense, like a Louis Farrakhan or somebody coming out and having coherent, hateful, consistently hateful views towards Jews um, or other groups of people in any way where you can accuse somebody of being racist and or anti and or anti-Semitic and consistently so. But he is echoing those things. Like Lex Friedman said, it's a dog whistle. The things that you're saying, you're pulling from this poisonous uh, thought well that's coming out of him. And the problem is some of it's rooted in his experiences, I guess, with, you know, maybe uh, Jewish people he's had around him in business or whatever that he's he's then generalizing off of that and using terms that are just kind of implanted in his head from over the years, like Jewish media and all those like Joseph Goebbels propagandist tropes. Like he's doing that. And that's all just amplified on a massive scale for everyone to be like, huh, and it's so dangerous that way because it's given a certain credibility. It's not like everybody agrees with me or you that, yeah, this is just an episode. Don't take it seriously, you know? So I'm not trying to – I'm trying to just explain how I'm, how I'm perceiving what he's doing. Mm -hmm. um, the reactions to what he's doing are a whole other conversation that I think should be talked about and analyzed, scrutinized, and condemned. Like I, I Candace Owens. Like Candace I own. perceive it a little bit differently, though. Yeah, let me hear. I think I think what he's exposing is that a lot of people around him have probably been probably believe this, and it's mm -hmm. probably not an uncommon belief among people who he, who he surrounds himself with, and also probably just like a large portion of people in America. Um, and because he's going through an episode. He's just sort of expressing this thing that's probably in the ether all around him all the time anyway. You mean like the I, ideas I, of like of Jewish control or conspiracy kind yeah. of uh, anti Semitism? Yeah. Classic yeah. anti Semitism? Yeah. Yeah. And like and the and the idea that the you know, white Ashkenazi Jews are not real Jews and mm. that uh, like African American or like the you know, black Americans are the real Jews and like But you and, hear idea Yeah, sorry. And, 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 you know, white Ashkenazi Jews have somehow stolen their identity from them. That, that whole, like, hateful thing. Have you ever been, ridden the subway in New York City with a yarmulke on? You've heard people yell at you about that yeah. stuff if you ride it enough or, like, walk through Times Square. Um, I, 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 think, I, think what, I think it's interesting because he is manic and he is saying something out loud and publicly that po probably are happening in private conversations all around him all the time. I hear you. The, 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 the confusing part of it is he's pulling from ideas and things like thoughts that he have he's absorbed over the years. Probably. I am not disagreeing yeah. with you, but it's being expressed like I'm I'm the real Jew. I'm blood of Christ. Like all these things. Yeah, no, I don't know like, if that's black Hebrew Israelite well, ideology, well, is it? Well, well, that's what I'm saying. He's not even he's not even so smart because he's, he's talking about the 12 lost tribes, which isn't a thing. He's talking about the Tower of Basel, which isn't a thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, he, he doesn't even he doesn't even have the, the hateful rhetoric down. Right, but I'm saying that scattered incoherence yeah, no, of course. is no, of the course. episode. Of course, is the episode. Sorry, you're, of course, your, your yeah. mic is no, no. Your mic is clipping a tiny bit. Just turn the gain out low. Um, no, but that scattered incoherence of random thoughts is is what's evidence of what he's of what's going on. <coughs> it's it's circuitry misfires that are going on. And yes, sure. maybe there's real anger that's fueling it, but it's also compounded by his brain being completely on fire. And to have us. To have any sort of conversation other than that about what is going on to me is so disturbing, um, and then it ends up revealing other things like what the way when when he writes a tweet that's so clearly in its in its word for word substance anti-Semitic, right? And yeah. even even if its intention was from a place of 
mental turmoil, sleepiness, tiredness, crazy, whatever you want to call it, an episodic, uncontrolled, uh, uninhibited tweet, right? Yeah. For, for Candace Owens to then look at it and go, I have no idea what he's talking about. And yeah, just kind of pretend. What? I think it's disingenuous. And it, it's like. It, revel- it revealed, and I'm shifting into that a little bit because... Like, what can someone just do? Because I haven't been paying attention. Basically, what happened was when this was all coming out, she has a prior relationship with Kanye West. They're kind of buddy-buddy. He said things over the years like, I like the way Candace Owens thinks and all of that. And she, instead of looking at his tweet and just saying, because it's okay to say, oh, wow, this is a very ugly tweet. I hope Kanye West gets help. I don't know what's going on with him, but this is some real classic anti-Semitic stuff. She was like... An honest person, if you're an honest person and you look at that tweet, you don't think it's anti-Semitic. You ask yourself, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what this means. Like, just this commitment to ideology in the face of something so obviously anti-Semitic in its substance. She could have articulated that, I think it may be, like, the way I'm articulating it, which is, like, maybe it's coming from a place of, of mania and not a place of genuine animus. But she didn't say that. She's just trying to make excuses and contextualize blatant racism or blatant anti-Semitic substance because she's been so anti-woke fake cries of racism for so long. I think she feels that she has to anchor herself as the person who doesn't cancel anybody for any reason, no matter what. Like, you know what I mean? As opposed to just Mm -hmm. thinking, yes, I'm not into canceling people or censoring people or any of that. But that doesn't mean you lose all your sense of critical thinking to be able to see something that's so blatant and not call it out. Like, it just so it seems like she's playing a team sport. Yet, no matter what, I root for the anti woke, you know, whatever side you want to call that side. Like, that's the mm-hmm. team I'm on. I don't, and if anything comes into conflict with it, that doesn't matter. And under the guise of free thinking, open mindedness, truth, you know, and it's not like she doesn't say things I do, like, she, she will come across things I agree with that I find compelling. But I always have said this to you that I was suspect of this and, and worried about. When she got on the Daily Wire and all of that, that like she's not coming from a – she's acting in bad faith and not coming from a good place when it comes to being honest, like an honest player in the game. And this was so obvious to me of that. And then now she's getting into it on Twitter with like Jewish people and anti-Semitic – like organ uh, – not anti-Semitic. Uh, like Jew, uh, Jewish groups fighting against anti-Semitism are like challenging her all over Twitter and she's fighting back claiming yeah. this is people trying to shut down Kanye and cancel him. What did he really say? We know what he really said. He was on these podcasts just saying this, spewing this poison. Now, I already contextualized it in, in a sense. I gave my perspective on where I think it's coming from and putting all this together. And I've been going off, but I just think it's revealing about everybody around it, from the people who are supporting, defending, to just amplifying. There's a feti- People are fetishizing his illness and their attributing a certain wisdom to it and they're putting it in the in the wrong conversation of cancel culture and political correctness and all this kind of stuff which i just find so disturbing why is any of this surprising to you that that that's the daily wire business model like no, that, it's a can- that is it a might culture be a can- war business model it's it not is. a it's not a daily wire business model it's definitely a candace owens though it's a candace model. okay i mean i i, I don't and, think that shapiro is so different than candace owens i i in, so in, he spoke in that, out against candace owens <laughs> no, 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 for real. sure. No, no, I'm not saying I'm not saying Ben Shapiro's anti-Semitic. I, I just mean they take <laughs> they take cultural, they take like uh, cultural events and then exploit them for like ad dollars. Like, like of course they're going to do this. This this is what they do. This is what mm, they do over there. See that? I, that's where and, I disagree. And they, with they you. run it through their lens and then and then spit it out to their audience, no matter what it is. Like e- Elon Musk is buying Twitter. Well, well, what does this mean for conservative? Me- like it's it's maybe it's not a conservative story, but we're going to make it into one. And yeah, but you don't think that's you. you don't think that's you doing that the very same thing by putting it into this is what they do. So that in every situation, it's consistently the same. The Daily Wire just does this in every situation. I don't think that's true at all. It's a it's a business with a with a, with a business model. This is how they make money. Like uh, they're, not a, they're not a nonprofit organization. No, but in defense of cred, credibility and authenticity, like Ben Shapiro was editor in chief of Breitbart and left okay. because I, he he because books. they were being apologists for Trump. And no, no, I'm, Trump- not, I'm, I'm not talking about ideologically, but 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 it would be malpractice for them to take a story like this and go, we won't touch it because he's mentally ill. Like, 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 like e- e- either Ben Shapiro is going to touch it by going against it or or someone in his organization will touch it 
by supporting it. But either way, they're going to touch what Kanye said and exploit it for ad dollars because that's what they do. They're they're not going to ignore Kanye because because like he's mentally. Yeah, I know, but I didn't say to ignore it. I'm literally just calling out what I'm seeing is problematic. Ben Shapiro no, spoke no, but, out, but, but but you're you're saying not to not to. Not to take it as anything other than like an unhealthy man's incoherent rants. That's just me offering a little insight onto it. And I think, but I think that when Candace Owens tries to defend the actual substance of the words that are like taken on their own at face yeah, but, value, but she, very anti Semitic, and she can't clearly see that when she does that. Uh, what I'm saying is that um, that's very revealing, and it's not this, the case with everybody at the Daily Wire. In this that is case. what I don't get about you, though. Like, like, do you not realize that Candace Owens is a character that's played on TV and not an actual person? Like, like, why does this surprise you? Specifically, like, like, like why does this like specific, dismay you? Specifically, with Candace, I said from the beginning, I said it to you. I'm not fooled. I wasn't fooled by Candace. Yeah, yeah, but but why even then? Why even like respond to her? She's she's playing. She's playing like a very high level like advertising game. Like why this character she's created is playing a game. Like she doesn't like. Like who are you responding to when you respond to Candace Owens? You're responding to like a a bot almost that's like was created uh, on the so internet. I, I, I like, don't think like a person. I don't think these like pundits and people go home and say, well, that was a fun role I played today. I'm actually secretly liberal, but they just love my conservative that's persona. Not, no, that's not, that's not what I said. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying they're like the character they created is so like vastly different and they're just like having fun, but like they have a voice and like, mm-hmm. and, and if you're a writer, like, you know what that voice is going to say next. Like, Oh, Kanye did this. Oh, I know what, I know what the Candace Owen voice is going to say about it. And then she says it. So you just said, why am I surprised by any of this? Like, I'm trying to think about what you're saying and not just like knee-jerk respond. Okay. Are this, is the punditry class or category mm-hmm. of people, Hannity, Tucker, are these guys playing team sports most of the time? How am I going to respond? Are they actually they, in the name? Are, are they all genuinely just trying to be seekers of truth? Or, and, and think critically about things or are they just really playing characters or like representing a certain narrative and and that's the narrative and maybe they believe that narrative but they're committing to that yes Shh. but 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 a more, a more that was point rhetorical to, a more point rhetorical. to question I mean, in other words I'm answering my own question I'm saying yeah. are they and I would say I get it yes like like they're and they're and that's their confirmation bias but I'm just saying if you analyze individually I think the appeal of the, of new media in particular is that to a lesser degree it's li- it has that but to a lesser degree the podcast world the the rogans the ben shapiros the brett weinsteins the jordan petersons these are people with their own perspectives that i think they do their best efforts to be genuine offering whatever they believe about a particular but, but, issue as as reflective of their own values and perspectives and insights now but 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 there are occasional people in this space that I think are reminiscent of the old types of media players. And Candace always struck me as someone very early on as not as informed on the issues that she wants to represent. And Dave Rubin, I thought, eventually became guilty of this also, where he used to be a conduit for great conversation and then started to try to represent all these positions that I agree with too, but got a little in over his head and now plays a little more of a team sport uh, position than someone who's curious and open and listening and dialoguing and being constructive. Mm-hmm. Like I can call that out, but I'm judging each player in the space individually, and you're sort okay. of treating it like a monolith. Well, I, no, I'm treating the the Daily Wire specifically. Like they're like Brett Weinstein is not a news organization. Like Joe Rogan is not a news organization. Um, like the Daily Wire is, but but no no. But I, I agree. I think I think Candace Candace Owens probably stands out in that regard. Mm-hmm. But when you when you respond to her, mm-hmm. like who? What, what what do you what, what do you imagine Candace? What do you imagine you are responding to? You, you, do you understand? Do you understand what I'm asking? Like, like, no. <laughs> when you when you say that when you say to Candace Owens, well, you watched um, the video I posted, right? Yeah, I watched the video, right? So so when you're responding to her response, do, are you responding to like a person with a family? And wants and needs and feelings and opinions and like a deeply felt, you know, stance on Kanye West. 
I mean, I don't. It's I'm not sending a, a I'm not sending a text to a friend on my our personal contact list. It's a different mode of reaching out or communicating with somebody it's not personal because right, we don't right. know we be, because we don't know each no, other I, 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 I understand that but i'm saying you're you're so you're contributing to this like farcical conversation that's going on where kanye says something crazy but she says something crazy to support him and mm-hmm. then you say something but like but hopefully not, what what i believe i'm saying can offer some sort of i think you know, uh, I wouldn't say extending an olive branch. I was being constructive, but hopefully in that constructive criticism exists tr- the attempt to keep myself and anyone else honest about this conversation. Mm-hmm. Because if it's not being said in that way, and for someone like me who has my foot in so many of these doors in this particular uh, uh, controversy, not that I know any of the people personally, but the issues being spoken about, anti-Semitism, Judaism, like... Holocaust surviving grandparents, uh, my own, you know, journeys through uh, trials and tribulations with <coughs> with mental illness and musician and artist. I understand the artist side of things. I like I just I related to a lot of things resonated with me in this particular thing. It wasn't like I'm like, oh, my God, I found confirmation bias at the Daily Wire. Mm-hmm. It exists everywhere. It's not that's not all new to me. But the, this whole thing, I never made a video like that. But. Um, especially when Candace has said things that I do resonate with. We've read a lot of the same people and we agree on certain things, like uh, uh, probably a lot of things, but it's a more, it's more a matter of the place we're coming from. And I have been made aware of my own confirmation biases just in terms of developing and like knowing that I'm aware when I'm, when I'm recycling someone else's opinion that I happen to agree with, but I'm not as informed as the original source of the opinion. And like, you can catch yourself doing that. And it's a hard thing to come to terms with. Even though you can still find the arguments for a particular position just as compelling, if you haven't done all the research and been informed as that person conveying it, even though they convinced you, you just have to be aware of that that, and be humbled by that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But in this case, there were so many different things that I was just like, I'm going to offer a little bit of a a position that I haven't seen enough of. Mm -hmm. If I had seen a thousand people make this point, maybe I just would have retweeted a video or something or shared a post or whatever. I've heard Coleman Hughes criticize Candace for similar things, for her, you know, political positions, and uh, I've heard that. And I, but, but in this particular case, you know, um, it was also just so bizarre that somebody could go out there. It's sort of like forget Kanye individually, but as an experiment in blatant anti-Semitism in its like most traditional or like most recent form of like the 1930s and 40s for it to just be rehashed. And it's there on like, you know, old episodes of, uh, I don't know, Maury, po- uh, old episodes of Ricky Lake or whatever. Those sh- Remember the talk shows that have white supremacists come on and say, it? but this is, it's never, it's, it's very rarely a case where it's somebody this big, you know, as the vehicle for such anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic remarks, yeah. you know? So Kanye is that big and it's all making its rounds. And to see any sort of debate about it or trying to explain it or whatever, or the, the kind of like, okay, or the sort of like pass it was getting at least while it was happening, I was like, wow, this is, uh, this is uh, worth commenting on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Does that answer your question? Not really. But uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Why? Because you think I'm kidding myself that, it, that it's constructive at all to say anything? Because it's all pretend? Yeah, yeah. I mean, say, I'm saying it, in, in terms of like, um, in terms of thinking, there's 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 any sort of thought out response by Candace Owens, except for this is an opportunity for me to to increase my audience. Oh, for me like, or for Candace? No, no, for her. I, I I just thinking like I just think like interacting with that entire like ecosystem is very silly. It's very so. Silly. This is um, a but, good transition. But, but, what but about to, Lex Fridman? Inter- but what? Sorry. Yeah, so so let's talk about that. Yeah, so, so Lex Friedman Lex participating Friedman in was this. really interested. Yeah, it Explain was, he was why really you interesting. Think that. Uh, why? And 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 by, and by the way, I think it's also interesting that he did that, where he's mm-hmm. like, "There's this really ugly thing going on." Like, I, I I hope what he said to himself was like, "Let's be honest. Every podcast in the world wants to have Kanye on their on their thing right now because it's it's guaranteed millions of views, right? Mm-hmm. Like, why why should I be someone who interviews him? So I think probably Joe Rogan went. There's no real reason I should be talking to him right now. I don't have much to add to the conversation." 
Tim Dillon was probably, you know, like all these people. But the, I, I hope Lex Friedman said themselves. Why the like, Jews? <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong, Kanye. You're not. Um, well, I think that was Trump. Uh, um, um, no, I, I mean, I hope Lex Friedman said to himself, no, you know what? I, I have like my podcast is about love and I'm a Jew and I'm a, like a survivor of communism. Mm-hmm. And like I think I can have a constructive conversation with this person and maybe teach him something. And like these are things I talk about anyway on my podcast. I, 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 I hope that's what he did. So um, well, let me ask you this. Why do yeah. you think – my video aside, because there's always something a little cringy about, here's what I have to say about, you know, I, I get that. My point is, why is his video any more or less valuable and constructive to this to this uh, event and episode going on right now than yeah. anything I would say or anybody else? Like, what, what about Lex to you no, no, I don't, is I, more I don't valuable? That. I guess maybe this is what bothers me about your video. I think Candace exploited... The anti-Semitic remarks by Kanye to elevate her profile, and this this may sound harsh, but I'm just going to say it as I'm thinking out loud. And you're exploiting Candace's exploitation of his anti-Semitic remarks to elevate your profile because right. you didn't just say, "Here's what I think." You addressed it at Candace, which is like a, which is a way to to like contextualize it and and hop on to another. Already cloud chase. You think I did it? Think I no, did it not, for cloud. no, not cloud chasing. But it's just, it's it's like a hash. You hashtagged it. You hashtagged mm-hmm. it like vocally, you know, and like contextually. You're like, I'm not just gonna say here's what I think. I'm gonna say it in response to Candace, which well, is like, but Candace, but, but here's piggybacking the thing. on. I understand. Yeah, which, but and but you know, I love you. I'm not. I'm not even like. Um, but but maybe that's where that's where that uh, energy comes from. Yeah, but I think. The reason I specifically – I didn't say here are my thoughts on the Kanye West thing. Like Candace was the one who uniquely was trying to whitewash and defend um, Kanye and his remarks. And it was such an <coughs> egregious, egregious like overt display of sort of blind spot, a blind spot that she might have. That's obvious. And in a way, like I empathize with her. Because I've been there. Like, I know when I don't want to think something is true. That that might be so obviously true. Like, I know what that feels like when you're presented with something that you're like, well, if I call this out for racism, don't I sound like a leftist? You know, like, I know that feeling. I know that impulse of like, won't I sound like a woke leftist cancel culture person if I say Kanye should apologize? Like, you know, you get this impulse because we're so used to fighting against fake compulsory apologies, right? And uh, woke hysteria... And calling that out and people who are anti-free speech that when somebody does say something that is abhorrent, like you, beca- you develop a blind spot to it. So I, I kind of – I was kind of coming at it from a place of empathy too. And yes, I singled her out because I started seeing this we- – I started seeing a little bit of vindication on my part. Mm-hmm. I said to you like a year ago or whatever, she signed with the Daily Wire, Candace Owens. And it's – and at the time I was like, oh man – I feel and, and look, I'm not in this space, but just just my opinion, whatever. Deal with that. I was like, Ben is and this whole team is gonna rue the day. I could totally see this blowing up in their face. Because I just don't think I'm not trying to make an enemy of it, but I have to be honest of how I see it between me and you and everybody else, all four hundred people watching this. It's like I just don't see her as an honest player in the game in a lot of ways. I saw her on an episode of the Rupin Report with uh with a transgender woman and like the way she was handling her was just just awful like just treating her. like I'm not going to call you uh, she because I, I, I owe that to I, you know just this this way of being that is just positions that are not fully thought through you know but wanting to signal to a tribe that I'm that I'm you know red pill black that was her original name that I'm red pill black that's who I am and that's who I'm going to be forever no matter what no matter you know just trying to be signaling this sort of brand and in a very mm-hmm. obvious way. And so I saw that a long time ago, and I'm like, oh, man. So when this happened where it's like Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro, Orthodox Jew, you know, and everything that it stood for and all the – like a lot of good that I think that they've done and growth and success they've had, I felt like she was this part of it that was a little bit, you know, of a, of a dangerous, volatile thing. And this sort of happened, and then I started seeing her battling Jewish content creators on Twitter – Saying, who's this Rachelea trying to shut me down? And I'm like, ugh, you know what? Like, I have, I want to say something to you. 
you know, as I, I, I understand, I, cause like I, I empathize with the confirmation bias you're kind of experiencing and not wanting to be, to be perceived as, as such, but, but, and, and, and in doing so compromising critical thinking and like what you see is true. So I addressed it to her because I did. Yeah. I and I rarely so, so, do that. So and I got to, like 8,000 views. So, <laughs> <shut the fuck. laughs> so this goes to a bigger question of yeah. like, um, I, I tend to not give her the benefit of the doubt or have an empathy for her because she has a, a team and a staff mm-hmm. working for her. And like yeah. these, these things like don't, they don't just go through her mind. They go through mm-hmm. an entire staff mm-hmm. of, of hearing their opinions and thoughts and feedback on it. Um, so like, so I, so I don't really, I don't really give her, uh, any like leeway there. Like mm-hmm. she's, she's, she's responsible fully for everything she says. Yeah. Same thing with like, at, at what point, like I was surprised that Kanye went on, I didn't realize he was going around the podcast circuit. Like he done Lex, like defending himself and digging his heels in. I thought yeah. he was pretty much going around, like sort of backtracking a little bit. No. Like, but he, yeah, he really doubled down on it. So, I mm-hmm. mean, I had one thought I had was like, I, I wonder when the last time Kanye was alone was. Like, like, last time he flew somewhere alone and was on a plane alone for like a flight for a few hours, or like in a car alone or in his house alone. Mm-hmm. Like, like, he's probably constantly, constantly with people who must just be like, I mean, how does nobody step in and say, mm-hmm. This is this is going off the rails, Kanye. Like you need um, which, medicine, which, which Lex <laughs> talked about. Um, but but also like like just what a what a fucked up existence for mm. for that to never be a, like so like so. You, I mean, you could just imagine how someone could go crazy. But um, like at what point do you say, yeah, he's having a manic episode? But like regardless of all that, he has to be held responsible, and we have to take what he's saying seriously because he's he this he's, this is what he's choosing to do, and this is what he's. His support system is supporting, you know, and 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 not, and not dismiss it as a, a manic episode because that that's my instinct too, also to dismiss it. Yeah, but like if you walked by like a homeless person on the street saying exactly what he was saying, you'd be like, oh man, somebody needs to get that guy help. You wouldn't Wait. say, well, let me think about what he's saying. It's Wait, interesting. No, and, and, and he's I'm making a point. You would be like, yeah, exactly. But because yeah. he's on this peta. <laughs> Yeah. Because he's so amplified, it's it's yeah. lending this credibility and everyone's fetishizing it as if, wow, there must be some genius to what he's saying. And the reaction to it, I think, unveils a very disturbing thing happening in the media space and in the, the way people are defending him. Like like outwardly defending his remarks, not so who, his state. Who's defending him? Because I haven't heard any of that either. It's I, I, I know. honestly this happened and and I said I'm I'm setting this out like I'm not I'm not getting it's involved toxic, in any of this, but I'm but just but it's saying become something. So, wait, so who's defending him? Um, I I'm just talking about like I'm I'm talking about like the lowest hanging stuff like comment sections and okay. people who are and obviously there's fans of Kanye so they'll just say love Kanye love me some Kanye. Yeah. There's like you know people putting up image like you know and it does highlight you know there's that um. Nation of Islam, deep-rooted anti-Semitism stuff that's come from Farrakhan and those guys for <coughs> years, and it echoes some of that that comes out. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't know, like this whole like, uh, you know, the tropes about the Jewish media, Jewish control, those kinds of things. <coughs> it's it's not seeing mainstream defense or support. It's he's obviously getting okay. all this backlash and all this stuff. But then you're seeing this. I think here's also what troubles me about it. Like on an, on another level, like. One of the reasons I take issue with Candace in, in, a, in a deeper way is that it's one thing if somebody's out there saying things that you most that, that you can write off as like I completely disagree with that. If some Marxist communist guy woke person is out there spouting ideas on a podcast, I'm just like, ugh, that person's crazy. I just completely disagree. That person doesn't know anything about economics and whatever. All these kinds of things I can I can either write it off or have someone debate them and shut it down and debunk those arguments or whatever. But when someone goes out there saying things you do agree with, like uh, it, oftentimes, and not in this context, but when, when Candace Owens is going out there talking about climate change on Joe Rogan, but from a very ill-informed place and just kind of taking the talking point without anything to back it up, oh, I don't buy it. Yeah, I just don't buy it. Now, I've read Alex Epstein. I've read The Moral Case for Fossil Fuels, a lot of uh, objectivist uh, stuff about about it. And there's a lot of uh, credibility to the argument of why climate hysteria, we've talked about this isn't legit is uh, is overblown and all that but just to go out and say i don't buy it and then when someone's making arguments 
that you think are valid but not backing them up, that does a much bigger disservice to things that I think are really important and ideas that are – it's one thing to have ideas that completely disagree and antithetical to what you believe. But for people to go out there and like, you know, if somebody was going out there talking about Judaism in a shallow way or not substantive way, you would be like, oh, that's just – that's not representative of what that, what that really is. It's doing a disservice to it as opposed to – Someone who was a different religion entirely, that you wouldn't take it the same way. It wouldn't resonate mm-hmm. with you in the same way. You know what I mean? So in any event, what was I talking about? I don't know. <laughs> um, I got lost there for a second. But my point is, I, I was talking about Candace, but then you were talking about... Uh, well, during Lex's oh, um, interview... Oh, the, the comment section. The, you don't, you're not seeing mainstream oh, support yeah, of, okay. of Kanye's remarks. You're seeing a lot of public backlash. Yeah. But I fear... That it's being viewed through that very same binary lens of, oh, this is just cancel culture coming again for Kanye, trying to shut down voices, because it's this weird now cross-section. Like, Kanye, it's like uh, it's like conservatives, right, who support, there's conservatives who support Trump and Israel and all that whole, like, that whole sliver, but then you have Kanye bouncing all around, like, love Trump, hates BLM, pro-life and hates the Jews, you know, it's just, it's all over yeah. the place. And I think a lot of these yeah. ideas that he's, that he's, that, that are just coming out from him are coming from a very scattered, uh, unstable place, not from a place to be taken seriously, but anyway. For sure. Um, During the, the Lex Friedman interview. Yes, let's talk about it more. He was making, Kanye, I thought, made an interesting point. <laughs> and I, and I didn't, I, I, I don't think, I don't think Lex Friedman, I, I don't, I I didn't think Lex did such did such a great job like um arguing with him although I don't know who could have but anyway he he said he Kanye was like he was like you know all these people who did all these things to me they are Jewish mm-hmm. and I can't say that and 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 then Lex went into like you know the Holocaust and all this but like mm-hmm. like what what would you? I was I was wondering what, what would you say to someone who went like, like Kanye is not wrong. They are all Jewish, and you can't point that out. Like I understand the fallacy of that, but what do you say to someone who who says that because he's not wrong? They are all Jewish, and you mm-hmm. can't point that out publicly. What do you say to that? I knew like, we so, would so, get. So, I so knew. Kanye, well, I knew just, we would get to this exact just point. For, just for some context, Kanye was saying, you know, my manager, agent, accountant, head of the studio, blah 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 blah. blah they all decided which songs got released, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. It, it it shaped my career, and all those people were Jewish. And mm-hmm. then you know they, that's what he said. And he's like, he's like, and but you can't publicly say that statement. Okay, so go. And, right. and, and and this could lead to a bigger conversation. And, and to add to that, not to throw, God forbid, fuel on the fire, it's like we are often proud of, you know, Jewish representation disproportionately in prominence and influence <coughs> and accomplishment. And we, we, we take pride in that. But the second it gets flipped, right, we, we, mm-hmm. we run, run for the hills because there's a danger in that. So a couple things. Um. Kanye said in a tweet leading up to this, it's time to go death con three on Jewish people. So he didn't just single out his individual team who all happened to be Jewish. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not asking you for an explanation of why Kanye is wrong and why that's right. like a hateful thing to say. I'm saying specifically, why can't Kanye say that? That I'm getting to that. Thing. I'm getting to that. But I'm contextual. Okay. I'm giving the context of like, um, why can't he say they all happen to be Jewish? He can say that, but to say that he's getting screwed as a product of their Jewishness or that there's some now okay. grand conspiracy of Jews as a whole to screw him, the entire Jewish media, right? Mm-hmm. Um, no, but- that is That is taking... Uh, that is the definition of being racist this is attributing to an entire group the actions of a of a pe- <coughs> some people around him who acted unfairly to him apparently but but um, but i think I think the thing that rings true mm-hmm. is that and maybe this is something that like the Jewish community isn 't talking enough about before but- you, i just but say it hold it hold it, but I just have to add this in i do 
I do. Okay. I'm just saying, and the reason it's so important not to generalize, particularly with the, the select few Jewish people around him, to the Jews as a whole and Jewish media as a whole and Jewish control as all these ideas, is because we have very good reason historically to be concerned about where those ideas no. lead. You're taking, but you're taking it way too far. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. That's so saying. anyway, what, you were saying. I, I, why I, I can't cut you, you off. Pu- why can't you? Pu- no, 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 because everything you're saying is exactly the response. But I don't think it answers the question of why can't you publicly say mm-hmm. that all the people, are, why, why, what, you just can't say that thing. All, all the people, all the people that manage my career are Jewish. Like, like I, I, th- I, th- I think the the nugget of th- things don't hit a nerve unless there's a nugget of truth in there. And I think the nugget of truth in what Kanye is saying is that is that there there is this super 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 sensitivity of American Jews and anyone who's liberal minded mm. against any sort of like speech that that like you know borders on anti anti semitism in 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 any way and like and, and there is major um repercussions for for saying anything like that in, in ways that there aren't for other groups and like and uh i'm i'm not saying i disagree with that i'm not saying i don't understand where that comes from and and all that but like yeah. but there there is like a potency right. to it that doesn't exist elsewhere um, unless you're saying it I, from a good place, unless you're saying it from a, you know, if, if you're a comic and you're making a joke about your team, oh, all Jews, I feel good about it. All my doctors are no, Jewish. Yeah, I no, go no, 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 yeah, of course, no, but 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 I, but I think there's this feeling of like people don't like to feel limited and they don't like to feel right. that way, and and there is a certain like, um, hundred percent, there's a certain s- sensitivity that we have that um, that 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 I I personally feel. I don't personally feel that, and like I, I feel like it's a. You don't personally ex- feel what? I think I think our hypersensitivity to anti-Semitic language I think shows probably more of our self-consciousness and and lack of of ide- of like heritage of identity with our heritage and understanding of our own traditions and community that most people feel than it does any sort of like imminent danger. Right. So like, if 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 some if the Jewishness of uh, Kanye's team is being highlighted with a negative connotation or a pl- from a place of animus, right? Mm-hmm. From someone that influential. As you said, one can understand given that not 50 years ago in a modernized country of Western Europe, Jews were I'm not making I'm not just like pontificating whatever that whatever that word is, but Given that we were slaughtered in mass, starting from a cultural uh, media propagandist machine that had to delegitimize and dehumanize Jews as a whole, in the modern era that that happened not long ago, hypersensitivity to anti-Semitic language in the culture, coming from a place of animus. I'm not talking mm-hmm. about humor, you know, and I'm not talking about like stereotypes and generalizing from a from a from a good place or a loving place. I'm talking about it from a hostile place. One can understand. Why we would be sensitive uh, to calling it out? Now, I think where you're, where, where you, what you're getting at is interesting. That if we just shut it down and try to go like this every time we hear anything like that, how is that constructive? Will yeah, be Goldberg yeah. says the wrong thing with the word right. Jew in it. I'll never speak about Jews right. again. It's right. not Voldemort. Like they, it should be able to be. And maybe, maybe the way we should handle it with with a little more confidence. I yeah, know what, what you're saying. What, what, what it's saying is that is that your words are so much stronger than we are. Your mm. words can kill us. Like they killed my grandparents. You can kill me because I'm weak and I'm nothing. And at a second's at a second's thought, the entire country could just kill me and my whole family because we're nothing. We're weak little Jews. Like Michael, that, that, you look you look like <laughs> you're looking right now like a Jewish propaganda poster. I know, <laughs> I know that that that, that, <laughs> that 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 that's what it brings out of me. But that's what it's saying. It's like no, no one can say anything because we're so we're not strong. Do you have a we're globe? You can, do you have a globe, Michael? Just grab a globe with your nails. I understand no, 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 that, but that's, what it is. But that's where, why where Lex is... Fridman's approach was the probably the best way to do it. Calling him yes. out on his bullshit, and, I, I, and that's what yeah. I liked. That's what I liked about Lex Fridman. Yes. That, that, that that's that's what I liked about it. But 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 I thought Kanye's point was like not quite. It was not quite like disgustfully of like. But, of no, but like, at the end, maybe, like you, you should be able to say whatever you want, and we should be able to discuss it. 
You know, hundred, like yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, and, I, and, and you should educate yourself. I don't know. I think what it did reveal was that mm-hmm. the knee jerk reaction to shut someone down who is saying things that are totally hateful and wrong <coughs> and abhorrent. Maybe the knee jerk reaction isn't to sh- sh- shove them in a corner and try to lock the door behind them and so and muzzle them as much as it's sunlight's the best disinfectant. And what Lex Fridman, as pale skinned as he is, he's so sunlight is the is the best disinfectant. <coughs> and he demonstrated that by listening to Kanye mm. and then push. I thought he did a pretty good job he because did. given given he Kanye's instability, job. he. He he maintained sort of cordial civility and also educated him. And I think Kanye, it kind of you watch the interview and Kanye's riled up in the beginning. Yeah. And then at the end, Kanye's like tired and worn down and it's just like kind of listening. Well, you know when it happened to the best, when you know. Do you know when it happened? When when he said when um all of a sudden sort of Lex Friedman sort of wandered off and he went like you lost me moment. When you said you didn't trust me, it really hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. He's like, no one's ever said that to me before, and it really hurt me. And then you you saw Kanye sort of be like, oh, like I'm talking about human beings. I'm not talking about like some f- philosophical concept of Jew. But like, and, here's a person in front of me whose feelings yeah. are hurt, and yeah. it totally changed the whole his whole demeanor. And did you notice that by the end, all of a sudden, out of seemingly out of nowhere, Kanye goes, "I am sorry. Like I shouldn't do that." Like yeah. he sort of came. He had a moment, and you're watching yeah. this, and then he's like. I love you. I like you. Like there was a coherence. Like what Lex Freeman was able to do was almost therapy. He he served as a therapist. Oh, yeah. He hurt he heard him through the whole thing and then brought him back a little to earth and was able to get a little bit coherent. To have yeah. engineering opportunities. <laughs> like yeah, it was I all mean, messy. And, but well, he was what, able to to he was also able to push back. The way he pushed back to Kanye was directly to Kanye and yeah. not in a way that he's trying to be like the way Pierce Morgan would do it. Right. You know, and like Pierce Morgan is, is giving the talking point. <coughs> you should apologize. What you said is disgusting and outright. Like Lex was like, listen, man, like what you're saying. Like he was having a conversation and we were watching it. Yeah. That dialogue. Yeah, and, right. And, and, el- and also using Kanye's own sort of self-image against him being like, mm-hmm. like you say you're a great man and you're samurai. This is not what samurais do. It was like, I mean, when you say he didn't do the thought, best. I thought he was. I thought his tour divorce performance. No, well, uh, I, I guess. I guess what I meant was I don't. I don't know. I don't know if he accomplished like what he what he set out to do. But no, he 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 did. He 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 did a very good job, and I think he did accomplish something. So I I, I walked even, that back. Even the mentioning of Joseph Goebbels to Kanye West, I don't think the term Joseph Goebbels he ever registered in Kanye's mind until mm-hmm. sitting down with Lex. And I think it it's, it humbled Kanye in a way to say like I there's a lot I don't know and he's like you should read this and this about he's like it's very heavy stuff and then Kanye realizes I think I'm just angry at a bunch of people who happen to be Jewish right right and and, did, and, and, and my dad <laughs> and my ex wife who like clearly yeah. I'm still in love with that was right. crazy when he's talking yeah. about Kim how <laughs> in love Kanye is with her but but also like the only reason he ever loved her was because she has good DNA. Which is like crazy and a crazy Nazi thing to say, like that was so nuts. It was. Uh, did you? No, I but to no me that idea. was a manic thing too. We have good DNA. Like we're blessed. We we are we are genius. We are stroke of this. I don't yeah, even know if that was a genetic he's claim. Cl- he's clearly like um, not over her. Yeah, I know. Like she, I know. like she clearly left him uh-huh. against his will. Like but he's and, not and, and well. He he's not. It. He blames it on his failure to to produce the biggest fashion line in the world. Like but he's, he's not a boy, well. he's a little boy. Wouldn't you leave Kanye if you were Kim Kardashian? I, I, how yeah, but I didn't. I, 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 it's 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 so easy to connect the dots between like he got his heart broken to this. Mm-hmm. And and I think Lex exposed that really well. I'm just saying that the interview is an interview for all interviews because of through all the clutter and craziness. Like Lex didn't take the bait on. He got it. When, remember when he was like. Are you sleeping? And then Kanye said, "Don't ask yeah. me that shit." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, "You're right. Sorry. I just yeah. that was a, that was me wanting to know if you're sleeping because I don't yeah. think he is." But I was like, uh, "I was like, I just like it was it was a beautiful interview and a beautiful kind of moment, and that's why I wanted to talk to you about it and yeah. assemble this podcast emergency because I felt in the whole space of it all, I don't know. Mm. While something is so fresh and resonant, there are mm. moments like this when these happened. Mm. Trump wins in 2016." Russia invades Ukraine, you know, like we get together and there's like mm. singular things going on in the world. And yeah. when they happen, I, because we have this platform and this like huge audience, <laughs> because we have yeah. this platform, I feel like compelled to like, let's, let's put this through us. I want to know what they mean 
by Jewish media. I want to. I really want to know what they mean. Yeah. Yes, because trying like, to what, just what shut they it, think that means because yeah. maybe trying to shut it down from the public discourse only further fuels the fire and proves a false point. You see, trying to shut us down, maybe shutting off Whoopi Goldberg from the view, as opposed to like having her on Lex Friedman right. to talk about it, is yeah. much is much less productive and much less constructive and, right. and, and, and it has the opposite effect. I understand that point. But when you let people like him, right, like uh, say what they want to say and then invite them on to like discuss it, it's more you can get somewhere and you can change minds and you can promote love instead of hate. And I think that's what Lex did, so more power to him. And it is a lesson in so many different things. I do think that there was a lot to be gained and learned from this whole episode of what's going on right now on so mm. many different things, on mental illness, on culture on influence on celebrity on confirmation bias on political tribalism like it crosses so many things you know yes it's very it's very ripe it's mm-hmm. very very ripe and the, and and then also i think it's like very depraved cuz it's not really right it's not much at all of anything and we're all just using it as a as a as excuse to by the way amplify you know f- for for another 10 billion times the phrase jewish media you know yeah, how, but how at the many same times time- has, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, that yeah, just, that's what that's what gets under my skin about it. The fake microcosm of social media, though, could be our little w- way of experimenting with what happens when these ideas permeate before they're actually consequential in the real world and they don't blow up in our face. That's interesting. Now yeah. we've been given a lid onto what people are thinking and feeling and expressing, yeah. and you're like, okay, it hasn't gone too far yet. Perhaps we can salvage it by having real conversation outside yeah. of it, you know? Yeah. And therefore there's some silver lining there. And I get it. Louis C.K. said, I don't think anything ever uttered online is real at all. There's not yeah, a genuine thing yeah, on Twitter that, yeah. ever. It's not real. But what is real is Lex Fruman talking to Kanye West. That's real to yeah. me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so go watch it if you're listening to this. I will submit your cancellation after this episode, Michael. Do not worry. <laughs> um, anyway, that's Buckle Up episode bonus episode 42.1 because 43 is coming 43. out next week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 43 is a different one. 42.1 bonus episode, emergency press conference, in the words of Dave Portnoy, another Jew who is a, a fellow Jew. Um, anyway, two Jews. Okay. <laughs> I'm Israel Chai. Okay, Michael. Uh, I guess we'll submit this to Infowars, or where do you want to put this episode? Good God. We also got to talk about him next time. The, the, billi- the billion dollar CEOs. Trillion. Something crazy. I mean, it's crazy. Um, anyway, good talking to you, Michael. Or should I say, <coughs> Michael. Meir, Meir Tzvi. You know Meir Tzvi. I'm known Yehonatan. <coughs> I think in the background for the episode. Da, 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 <laughs> All right. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, that's Buckle Up episode 42.1. Feel better, Michael. <laughs>